we are. Let's go get a taxi. Okay, wait a sec. Let's start back a bit. Am I, a fairly normal 18 year old, able to get the COVID vaccine this early? Let's talk about that. So for those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Nathan. I'm a year 13 student, I'm 18 years old, and I study various subjects in the IB. I dabble in video editing, theatre, stage management specifically. Here is a video of me looking slightly ridiculous while stage managing. And currently I'm a key worker. I work at a COVID test site in Paddock Wood and that makes me eligible for the COVID vaccine. So I wanted to explain a bit about how the process works and also a bit why this vaccine is special, about why some of the technologies that are being used in it have never been used before in vaccines and what makes them different. Okay, so I promise that we'll get to the actual process of having the vaccine in a sec, but first I'm going to talk about some of the technologies being used in these vaccines because they're actually really cool to me and have some nice benefits to you when you go and get your vaccine. <laughs> Traditional vaccines are called viral vector vaccines. Say you want to make a vaccine to protect against COVID-19. You would take a different virus and modify it so that it looks very similar to the immune system to the virus causing the disease you want to vaccinate against. So in the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, researchers used a base virus called Chadox or Chadox and modified it so that it looks to your body like SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. Your body sees the vaccine dose and creates some antibodies, which make up most of your immune response. There is some role of T-cells in that response, but that's slightly beyond the scope of this explanation. Now, the benefits of viral vector vaccines is that you don't need as much product to cause an immune response, and they can be very easily manufactured at scale. But if someone has been exposed to the virus before, the vaccine might not be as effective. Another method of making a vaccine is how the Pfizer, BioNTech, BioNTech, whatever one was developed, and it uses something called ribonucleic acid or RNA. Specifically, it uses something called messenger or mRNA, so called because it carries instructions to cells. Once injected, the mRNA vaccine instructs cells in the body to make something called the spike protein, which is essentially the way a virus latches onto cells. Once those spike proteins are made, they present themselves on a cell, much like a virus would do. And the body recognises that the spike proteins don't belong and starts building antibodies, developing an immune response. Now, while both of these methods produce identical results, protection from a virus, the main advantage of mRNA vaccines is that they can be developed at much faster speeds than traditional vaccines. Moderna is also making an mRNA COVID vaccine. Eight days after the genome sequence for the virus was obtained, they finalised an mRNA vaccine candidate, which had its first clinical trial dose administered just two months after that. That is shockingly fast, considering that the usual development time for a vaccine is nearly 10 to 15 years. And additionally, even if there's no end difference between the two methods, having two methods is useful just in case. Imagine that there's a new virus or disease X and two vaccines are made for it, one using viral vectors and one using mRNA. If the viral vector one, for whatever reason, isn't effective enough against this virus and no viral vector vaccine is able to combat it, well hey, we've still got the mRNA vaccine to use against the disease. Now, the tech here is really cool and while you might not notice a ton of it, it's incredibly beneficial for when you go and get your jab. Phew, 
And with that, on to the actual process of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. So here we are at Medway Maritime Hospital. I'm trying to give a piece to camera and not doing very well because I don't have a mic on. You essentially head into the vaccination centre. You get sat down with some forms you fill out saying you can send to the vaccine and whatnot. Uh, here I am in the main waiting room after that. And I don't have any actual footage of the needle going in. I'd probably think while editing, but here is the little cotton pad they put on your arm afterwards. After that, they keep you in a room for about 15 minutes. I was in there for 20 because of medical reasons to make sure you don't negatively react to the vaccine. And then you're done. And they also give you a little card there, which has your batch number and vaccine type and whatnot on it. So yeah, that's the entire process. My arm did hurt a bit from it. This is recorded a few days after, but that's to be expected from any jab for me. So please, if you're offered the vaccine, take up the offer. Every jab is a step back to normality. So do go to your local vaccination center when you're given the opportunity. Thank you for watching. Um, this is a bit of a different video to what I would normally intend on making, but it was still quite fun to do. Um, if you liked it, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And also if you've got any ideas for future videos, I am always looking for things to do, especially considering the pandemic has greatly reduced what I would otherwise like to do. So yeah, any ideas, let me know. See ya.